So Napoleon, I want to preface this review by saying two things. Number one is that I am not a history buff, and to be honest, I don't really know much about Napoleon other than just the general idea of who he was. I knew about the Battle of Waterloo, but when it comes to the details about his life and all the things that he's done in history, I don't really know much about it. I'm not a history buff myself, and to be honest, when I see a movie that's set in historical times, I don't really care personally about how historically accurate it is. I go see movies to see a good story, to see good character development. I want to get into the headspace of a character. I want to be able to understand them, and I want to see their journey over the course of two hours or whatever it is that the movie is. So I don't really care personally about how historically accurate something is, but I'm sure if you do, that might imply how much you're actually going to like this movie or not, but I'm just throwing that out there. The other thing is, I am a big Ridley Scott fan in general, and although he does have some movies that I don't like, I like more of his movies than I dislike. So I was excited to see another Ridley Scott epic film uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix, who is also another actor that I really, really enjoy. So I was going into this movie basically hoping for the best because I like the director behind it, I don't really care about the historical accuracies, and I like Joaquin Phoenix as an actor. So that was my headspace upon entering the movie, but I'm sure how you feel about all those things is going to inform how you feel about the movie, and I can't speak about how historically accurate the film is. So I'm only going to be looking at this and reviewing this as a movie, as the characters in the movie, and not relating it to actual history. So just throwing that out there because I'm sure, depending on how you feel about that, is how you're going to feel about the movie itself. Having said that, though, I am very much in the middle on this movie, and I'm going to tell you my positives and negatives on it. First thing is the positives, and I think the majority of this comes with the cinematography of this film. It looks absolutely incredible. It looks beautiful, but even more so than that is when it comes to the war and battle sequences. Now, there are three big war sequences in this movie, and all of them are just absolutely jaw-dropping amazing. They are done incredibly well, very meticulously. The editing is great on them. And the thing that I appreciated the most about the battle sequences in this movie is the sense of being able to tell what is going on at all times. Now, you are obviously dealing with, you know, thousands of soldiers on either side, depending on what battle it is, and the strategies that Napoleon is uh, improvising and where he's placing the cannons and where he's directing characters to go. And the thing that I really, really appreciate about this movie is that at all times during the battle sequences, I could tell what was going on. There's a lot of war movies or a lot of historical battle movies where the camera is just so up close that you can't tell what's going on. There's so much shaking cam, there's dirt flying in the camera, and they're trying to make it feel, I guess, immersive. But by doing that, you take me out of the battle because I can't tell what's going on. This movie does a really, really good job about showing you what is happening at all times on the battlefield and not shying away from the horrors of it as well. I can definitely say that there's a couple instances in this movie where I hadn't seen that in a war movie before. And, uh, I, you know, I was really impressed to see it. So those sequences alone if you watch them kind of in a bottle, they are amazing. I think all the battle sequences in this movie are great. The downside comes with almost everything else. Uh, because to me, again, not knowing who Napoleon was and not knowing his character, watching all the other sequences in this movie, uh, I was very confused about who this character was because he seemed to be just so incredibly awkward at all times. And Joaquin Phoenix plays it amazingly. There's nothing wrong with Joaquin's um, performance, but he's just such an awkward person. And I can imagine maybe he is just the kind of guy that when it comes to battle and strategy, he's just perfect. Like that is where, you know, he is on point 10 out of 10, 100%. But when it comes to interacting with other characters, when it comes to his relationship dynamic with Josephine, which I'll get into here in a moment, um, and just how he acts anywhere else. He's so like out of place and he mumbles and sometimes he like flies off the handle and starts yelling at people. But like I never really got a full understanding of like who this guy is. And I think that's one of my biggest problems because the things that it showcases is, you know, his his skill on the battlefield, yes. But then also a huge large majority of this movie is his relationship with this girl, Josephine. And this relationship is so bonkers and all over the place that maybe it has to be true. You know what I mean? Like they say like truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. Maybe the accuracy of the historical side of the movie really focuses here um, in this relationship dynamic because it, like not to spoil things, I guess how do you spoil a historical movie? It's all, you know, out there. But like he meets this girl 
And there's basically no, like, connection between them, really, other than him just kind of staring at her awkwardly. And, like, his whole riz to pick her up is basically just, like... Like, he just kind of looks at her, and she just kind of accepts it. <laughs> and then they start fucking all the time, and she just kind of, like, accepts that, too. Like, she doesn't even really seem like she's into it, and also she's cheating on him half the time, and... You know, she's, like, sleeping with other dudes, but he doesn't want to, like, go of her, which I guess, you know, that's a, a cautionary tale to us all, where he just has this affection for her that is, like, so strong that he just wants to forgive her for everything. Even though he does lash out at her and there is conflict in the relationship, you know, it just seems to be this person that he can't let go of no matter what. So no matter how much he rises in the ranks, no matter how, how up in status he gets within France, he just can't seem to let go of this girl uh, that really is not good for him in any way but then again the kind of person he is they are kind of perfect for each other because they're both just kind of there she's kind of his reason for everything and it's like no matter how much he succeeds in life or what happens or if he's in war or out of war his mind always reverts back to her and again i don't know the historical accuracy so i don't know how true that is but that just seemed to be the constant thread line of this movie is that he would always go back to her no matter what happened. And there's a lot of lines and particular bits of dialogue in this movie that I kind of, in a low-key way, feel like this movie is a dark comedy. <laughs> because just the, the things that he would shout out, like there's a line where he's like sitting at a dinner table and he's arguing with Josephine. Uh, because she's not getting pregnant and, you know, he wants a son, he wants an heir. And he, like, she talks about, like, she makes fun of him for being fat or something like that. And then he just goes, like, destiny has brought me to this lamb chop as he, like, holds it up and shakes it. And I'm just thinking, like, this has got to be, like, a dark comedy in some ways. And even some of the other things he says to characters, like, there's a, there's a moment where he's arguing with a character and he's just like, you think you're so great because you got boats. And then he storms off and just like, like pouts off like a child. And it's just like, uh, I got to imagine like half of this movie is meant to be funny. And I was laughing in the theater and I don't know how many other people were, even like when him and Josephine are like fucking. And by the way, there's no nudity in this movie, but there is fucking. So just throwing that out there. I don't know. But like, it's just the way he does it is just like, I don't know if you know, even I should even describe it, but like, he's just so into it. He's like, yes. And she's just kind of like, all right. But the other thing that really drags this movie down is, and I think again, when you're doing a movie based on historical things, this is always a problem. This is why I generally don't really like biopics that much, even though there are some that stand out like, uh, like Oppenheimer earlier this year was an example of a standout uh, when it comes to that because it was able to keep the narrative very engaging all the way through. I think the main problem you have when you do historical movies, no matter what, is that real life is not set up like a movie. There is no three-act structure of real life. There is no, you know, twist and turn narrative to play. So you have to try to create a narrative out of this event happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. That is history. History is just like, it's written down in a way where it's just like, these things happen. But it's not happening in a way where you can put it into a three-act structure of a movie or in a narrative that where you can have great character development. It's just like, this happened, this happened, this happened. And this movie has that same problem, where it has to constantly jump from moment to moment to moment. You're traveling through like 30 or 40 years of this character's life where you're, you're just like, okay, this big historical thing happened. Now we got to jump forward five years and now we got to catch you up to speed with what's happening with the politics. And now this is happening. And now this is the reason why he's going to war. But like it all happens so like jumpy and and all over the place where it just feels like you're like, oh, okay, I guess I'm watching this movie now. And then it jumps ahead four or five years and the stakes are completely different. And you're like, oh, I guess I'm watching this movie now. And so the main problem it has is just trying to show all these big moments in Napoleon's career while also trying to keep the audience up to speed as to what's happening. And my problem also with not being a history buff and not knowing a lot of the story of Napoleon is like the movie would jump to a new sequence and it would try to catch you up to speed in like two minutes. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, you just have to like re-prepare your mind. Like you're, you're watching one full narrative 
and now all of a sudden it's in something completely different and you have to like change your focus to try to understand what's happening and this happens all the time throughout the movie and like i said earlier in the year there was oppenheimer that also did a lot of jumps in time but it kept the narrative flowing with the progress of where oppenheimer was at on a particular moment in the creation of the bomb that helped it feel more like a movie where this just kind of feels like things are happening, now other things are happening. Now with that, I also do want to say that I'm sure there is a director's cut and a much longer version that helps flesh things out. Ridley Scott is pretty much known for creating director's cuts and longer versions of almost all of his movies, so I'm sure there is a more cohesive, better understood movie out there that exists that had to be cut short for studios and for theater run times and stuff like that. So I'm sure there is a longer uncut director's version of Napoleon that probably explains things a little bit better. But if you're going for the theater experience, if you don't know the history, which I didn't, you know, you're just going to have to take things as they come. Just like catches you up to speed in like two minutes and you're like, all right, well, I guess that's what's happening now. I don't know. Overall, I can say that when it comes to the cinematography and the scope of things and the battle sequences, those were all great. Nothing wrong with Joaquin Phoenix's performance. Although, like I said, I feel like the movie is kind of a dark comedy because there's a lot of things Napoleon would do and say in the way he acts that would just make me laugh my ass off. I don't know if I'm supposed to be laughing, but I did. Um, but other than that, yeah, the majority of the movie is basically about his relationship with Josephine, which is just toxic and crazy and all over the place. And uh, you know, it, it could have benefited more from like a uh, like just a really strong focus on one thing as opposed to jumping around to so many things. But if you're telling the whole story of Napoleon, you got to have all those things in there. And it just kind of makes the movie feel like very random at times. Anyways, I would put it in the middle somewhere. It's not a movie that I disliked. It's not a movie that I loved. It's a movie that I thought had some pretty good moments in it. I enjoyed it. Probably not going to watch it again it's somewhere in the middle. So maybe if you're on the fence, wait till it comes on streaming or something. Uh, if you're a huge Napoleon, you know, diehard histor history buff, I don't know how you're going to feel about the accuracies. I can't speak to that, but I would say check it out for that. But uh, yeah, for me, it was just kind of, it was just kind of somewhere in the middle. You know, it was like, yeah, I liked it, but Nah, I'm not going to probably revisit it ever again. Anyways, guys, if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and a comment to help it in the algorithm. I would appreciate it. If you saw Napoleon, what did you think about it down below? And tell me what perspective you're coming at it. Did you watch it just as a film like I did? Or did you watch it as a history buff? Let me know what you think about it down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you next time.